Joe, Joe, and the Morning Family. Man, I hope you're having a great day. I mean, a super, super good day. I want to talk to you about something that is going to help you. And a lot of people don't fully understand this about God. But understand this. God's never going to let you go. And he's never going to let you down. Okay? He's not going to let you go. He'll never let you down. But he will let you go through things. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They're like, oh man, you know, I, I'm a believer. I should never go through anything bad. Uh, listen, I'm telling you, I want you to look at the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ just was not hung on a cross. He was beaten with a whip beard pulled out and had to carry his cross while being mocked by the people that he came to give his life for okay that doesn't sound like the perfect easy life but he did fulfill his calling a lot of times when we're going through something you got to remember, God will not let us down and he won't let us go. Now, I want to give you something that's going to help you tremendously. You know, we've started a mentoring group. And so a lot of people in this mentoring group, uh, if you're interested, you know, the link's below. Um, a lot of people are going through something. And I reassure them like, hey, there's a lot of people in our mentoring group going through the same things. We, we have a lot of different people that we mentor in, you know, in different things, different aspects. And a lot of times people are going through something because the nation may be going through this. You know, the, the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust, okay? And so what you got to understand is no matter how bad you think things are, other people are going through the same thing, okay? And also, you got to remember that God will never let you down and he will never allow the enemy to overtake you. Now, a lot of times, people let their mind and their emotions overtake them. But that's not God. God won't let that happen. I have a, a prophetic word coming out soon. It's, it's scheduled in, on uh, YouTube and Rumble. But the word was, uh, you got to pray above the storm. And it was a time when I was in warfare. And I could feel God with me. But the Lord said, you got to pray above everything that you're going through. Don't let your mind sink low. Don't let your emotions sink low. Don't emotionally get attached to the warfare. Keep pushing and, 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 and pray above what you're going through. But, but, but let me tell you, in the midst of my warfare, he's always with me. In the midst of me going through things, he's always with me. Because he's good. He's so good. He will never let you down he'll never forsake you he'll never quit on you but it's not always the easiest you know it's just like natural parenting uh, a few years back my son and i we were fishing and i mean right off the bat my son ezra landed about a five pound bass and uh, i'm just ezra's really young and he <laughs> He, boy, he was reeling in. And his pole was bent. Oh, his pole was screaming for help. This this bass was fighting. He was like, Dad, Dad. And he was you know, bowed up on this pole. That pole was bent over. I think he had like a little Zepco 33. And, um, and I said, Son, stay with it. And I was right there by him. And all of a sudden, you just saw his confidence building as he was just reeling in this fish. And... And then right when this big old bass got up there and he saw how big it was, he's like, Dad, I'm doing it. I'm like, yeah. But when he first cried for help, I just didn't jump in there and help him with the fish. But I stood behind him encouraging him. Another prophetic word I got recently that will be on YouTube and Rumble is uh, the Lord said you're going to build with the wind behind your back. And... You know, so many times when my kids were young and they were doing something, say, Dad, help, Dad, help. I said, oh, you got it, you got it. 
and I'll be right there by them, you know, watching and supervising. But you got to let them, you got to let them do something. And, you know, I, I was raised like that. Whenever I say, Dad, this is hard. He said, I know, but you got it. You got it. And a lot of times in life, when you're going through a hard situation, the Father, the Heavenly Father, God Almighty, will, will be like, hey, I got you. You're going to be okay. And I feel this so strong today. There's a lot of people in here that you're tired and you're weary. But I want to let you know, he's got you. You're going to be okay. But you have to listen to him. And he will lead you into things that you may not like, directions you may not want to go. But a lot of time to be healed and restored from something we we have to allow him. It was in a horror Bible Terry by Leonard Ravenhill. He, he said, you got to let the Lord take you down the dark corridors of your heart and knock on chamber doors that you've pushed away. You know, a lot of times people are wounded and will not allow themselves to be inwardly healed. A lot of people in our society, they want to be delivered, okay? Delivered, deliverance is kicking the devil out of the house. Inner healing is tearing down the house so the enemy has nothing to go back into. And you got to understand that he will never allow you to go through things when Holy Spirit is not right there with you. That's why if someone is in the hospital and they're going through something, they call family in to be there and encourage. That's why when a lady is giving birth, the husband comes in is encourage, encouraging her. That's why you need prayer friends that when somebody's going through something, you're like, hey, I got you, I got you, I got you. And uh, I got a lot of friends that um, I'm therefore called one of my intercessors yesterday and said, hey, just had you on my heart. Just want to check on you, make sure you're okay. They're like, well, you know, I'm your intercessor, Joe. And I need some prayer. And I said, oh, I got you. I got you today. And so understand that God's not going to let you go through things alone. God's not going to, you know, go through life. He's not going to let you down. He's not going to be like, I'm just going to let go of this person. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, I, he's there with you. And if you follow the correct leading of the Lord, he will guide you and lead you into a community of people that will be there. Like I was talking to someone the other day and I was like, you know, I got intercessors. I got spiritual mentors. I have an apostle. Um, I got prophetic voices in my life. Um, I got some really close friends. And, and that's where a lot of my strength comes from. If I'm going through something, I got, I got some people to call that when they pray, things happen. Okay? I want you to know that, that God's got you. And I even feel this right now by the Spirit, just that the Lord is going to properly align people. Just God is going to properly align people. And, you know... There's people that you've never met that you'll be super close with in a year or two. God will lead you to the right ministry, to, to the right. There's a lot of good mentors. I mean, let me tell you a story. I remember I was at a conference one time with a bunch of generals, and I was a young guy a few years back. And I was sitting there, and, and I said, you know, everybody's saying we need more fathers. We need more fathers in the faith. And these fathers were looking, and they're like, now there's plenty of fathers. We need more sons and daughters. Most everybody just wants someone to be there, but it's a two-way street. And it's a two-way street, and there's honor going both ways. And they said, these, these generals were like, we're just so tired of pouring out to people who backslide, who don't honor, who just, they just use us for a stepping stone or notoriety. Um, and, and so if you're a true son or daughter, you will find the right mentors you're looking for. I'm amazed at how many people put on Facebook, there's no real fathers or mothers out there. There's tons of them. 
what we're lacking is true sons and daughters in the faith. I remember one of the, the generals, one of the best generals in, in the world right now in the faith, he said, you know, I don't disciple but five people because I just don't see people who are, are real. And you've you got to understand, a lot of times people get mad or frustrated with God. How? I mean, like, I remember this this uh, gentleman, he got he got killed at uh, like two o'clock in the morning in a, at a bar fight, and his his spouse and his parents were so mad. They're like, "How could God, a loving God, let this happen? He has children, he has a wife." And I said, "Hey, look, you know, I know you're hurt, but please don't be mad at God." He's the only one that can heal you. A married man with kids should have not been at the bar at two in the morning. He put himself in a wrong situation. And they were like, why are we mad at God? And when I said it, I said it with, uh, I was in the spirit and it was just real loving. And I'm like, look, I, I know we don't understand some things, but God is the one person we should never be mad at, okay? And so they were able to receive some healing through that. But at first, they were frustrated that that happened. Listen, God's, God's not going to let you down. He's not going to let you go. But you have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so with that being said, we make bad decisions sometimes in life. And suffer the consequences because of it. And we get frustrated with the Lord. If we can all live a life that is yielded to Holy Spirit. We won't have to go through a lot of the healing that we have to go through. Like there's been times in my life I had to go through a lot of inner healing. And when I look back at it. There's only one reason for all of it. This guy right here. You know. Um, Hard headed. Abrasive. Prideful. And through different things in my life, you know, I was wounded physically on some stuff and then also, you know, wounded by people. But when I look at it, I was like, man, you know, a lot of times I things didn't happen the way I thought they should. So I got frustrated with people. Um, but the thing was, I didn't a lot of times turn to God. I turned to man when I should have turned to God. And and so a lot of times we don't want to put the time in our relationship with God because it's easier to pick up a phone. And I remember probably about four years ago, I was going through something and it was a big decision we were going to make. And, and I was going to pick up the phone and call somebody and the Holy Spirit said, Hey, I wish you would talk to me first about this. I said, man, that's crazy. I had three men I was going to call and tell them about this situation and see, give me some advice on it. So I would have three opinions in my head before I got the opinion of God. And so I talked to the Lord and he, he told me what to do and how to navigate through some things. So I called these three, three guys and they said, well, what did the Lord say? And I told them, they said, oh, yes, exactly what you should do. And, and so a lot of times in life, we're in the place that we are because we, we didn't listen to the Lord. Um, I was recently talking to somebody and things aren't going their way in life. And when I was talking to them, every time I said something, they just kind of like, just tell me why nothing would work, nothing would work. And I said, well, what is God saying about this? And they said, well, I really don't know. And I said, well, he'll never leave you, forsake you. And he will never abandon you. I would spend a few days really leaning into God and hear what he has to say. Because his voice has clarity at a degree that no other voice can have. And so I just want to encourage you today. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He'll never let you down. But he will let you go through some things like any good father should. You know, it's like, could you imagine, you know, <laughs> in, in life... Um, 
you know, my kids, I remember they were riding bikes. I, I took, uh, the training was off a little early and uh, none of them ever really crashed and burned. Um, and I, you know, let them kind of get stable, take the training wheels off. And they'd be like, oh, dad, I'm not ready, dad, I'm not ready. I said, just just trust me. And I'd, I'd, I'd push them and they would take off and they would go. And a, a lot of times we don't want God to take our training wheels off, you know, and you'll never reach the fullness of your calling and your gifting until you step out in the deep. And so I want to encourage you, be a little radical and moving forward with God. Take risk. You know, risk takers are the ones that change the world. You think about Peter stepping out of the boat, pretty big risk. You think about Esther going before the king. That was forbidden at those times, but she took a risk. The the one with the issue of blood, she wasn't even supposed to be allowed in the city and she wasn't supposed to touch you know, somebody, they said she was unclean, but she fought and fought and pushed and went and did whatever it took to get to Jesus. These are the Bible stories that we like, okay? Noah, building the ark before it rained. Watch rain. The Bible said it never rained before. You know, be a, be a risk taker. I, everything I've ever done that's really worked out for me, I, I took a risk and I was scared to do them. But you know what? It pays off. Because I know that he'll never leave me. He'll never let me down. And when I follow the leading and the voice of God, it always works out. So, I want y'all to know that I love you. And I'm always willing to pray for you. You can go to the website, jojodawson.net. Send me a prayer request. I'd love to pray for you because I really believe that we are in a very unique, amazing season in the church world business world and in america and israel and australia and canada um, and just, I just it's an exciting time but god's got you friends okay love y'all